Hi, we're the Hink family. We're going to be reading for you a play called And They Danced, written by John Stephen Paul and Dave Carrot at Valparaiso University on the text of the, the Rising of Lazarus. The play is designed to be performed by six people in a sanctuary, but since we can't be together, we're going to do it for you here from home. Four double handfuls of bulgur wheat, steamed until it cracks open. A measure of flour, a pinch of salt, a pinch of dried herbs rubbed together and sprinkled into the mixture. One egg beaten. Enough broth to give it moisture. Mix together. Prepare another bowl. Glazed for use by the fire. Rub around with olive oil. Press a clove of garlic into the surface. Place first mixture into the new bowl, firm down. Sprinkle breadcrumbs over the top, pat in, place a damp towel over the bowl. Esther wipes off her hands and brushes off her apron. She picks up the casserole and goes out her front door to the village street. There she walks down four or five houses and across. She stops at a door. Mary? Martha? Oh, Mary, I... I knew you'd be having all sorts of company these days, some folks even a distance out of town, and I know how things get short. I just wanted to bring over a little something here to help out. You can set it by the fire to warm and just use it whenever you happen to need it. And, um, Mary, I just wanted to say how sorry we are about Lazarus. We had hoped and prayed, like you and Martha did, that Jesus could get here in time. But with Lazarus taking sick so fast and then going so quickly, well, we just wanted you to know that we're so sorry. We're so sorry. Lazarus was dead. Against everybody's hopes, Lazarus, Lazarus was, was dead. dead. Oh, Lord, if you could have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Oh, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Oh, oh Lord, if, if only you had been here, here my, my brother, brother wouldn't, wouldn't have died. died. But Jesus had not been there. Blame the Palestinian postal system? The donkeys were slow, the cart broke down? Hardly. Word had gotten through to Jesus, and he, well, Jesus... Okay, okay, let's be honest. Jesus just dilly-dallied around for a couple of days before gathering his disciples and heading to Bethany. When, when he, he got, got there, there it, it would, would be too, too late. late. There would be no healing miracle in Bethany when Jesus got there. There would be no just in the nick of time and everything back to normal that day. Jesus would not be led to a sickbed, but to the graveyard. There, there he, he would, would stand, stand in front, front of, of a tomb. tomb. Father... I know that you listen to me. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth? Suddenly there would erupt in that graveyard the greatest gift unwrapping the world has ever seen. Funeral shroud and grave cloths torn and ripped, pulled this way and that. Poor Lazarus blinking his eyes in the bright light. His face smothered with tears and kisses. And hugs from his sisters and everybody around. Yelping, yelping and screaming and crying and, crying and shouting, shouting all at the same time. time. And suddenly, Lazarus would find himself lifted up on strong shoulders. With Mary and Martha tagging along behind as they start on their way out of the cemetery. And the funeral procession in reverse would make its way from cemetery back to town. Along the way, a couple young men would go off the side, down over the hill, down to a flock of sheep, and they would get the biggest ewe they could find, and they would butcher the ewe and clean her out there in the field and bring her into the village. Just as the fire that someone else started in the village square was dying down to very hot coals. Now they're putting the lamb on the spit on a rack and starting to burn it over the fire. In short order, this village will be transformed. Esther would be coming out of her house wondering. What in the world is going on? And she would soon know. And, and every, every passerby, passerby would know. know. Tables and chairs and benches from every house down from the side streets filling the village square. And food, trays and trays of food. Now Esther's funeral casserole will be the centerpiece at the head table. Then the lamb would be done. 
and the wineskins would come out, and, and everybody, everybody eat and drink and laugh, and cry and talk until, until they, they had their, their fill. fill. And when the sun dipped further below the horizon, another transformation would begin to take place in the village. Torches would be brought out and placed on the fronts of houses. Forty, fifty torches there flickering around the village square. And the tables and benches would all be pulled back off to the side. And down at one end, six stout chairs placed in a row. And in from the shadows would come musicians. Dulcimer. Harp. Two flutes. A tambourine. A drum. The women would grab the children and bring them over to the side where they would find a place to sit, and the men would step forward onto the street. Then the music would start, and the men would begin to dance, and they would dance. Every dance they knew, faster and faster and faster and faster, on into the night. And there would be Jesus in the middle of them dancing, his hands in the air, his feet and legs moving to every step he could remember his robe swaying with his body, while the torch lights flickered over the whole affair. Then the music would slow just for a moment, and one by one, the men of the village would pull back off to the side and find a place to sit on a bench or on the ground, until there were just two figures left in the center of the square. And Jesus and Lazarus would grasp hands together, and they would dance. None of that could have happened. Remember this, so you'll never forget it. None, None of that would, would have been, been at all possible. possible. Mark this indelibly in your memory. None, None of that, that would, would have, have happened. happened. Except first, Lazarus had died. Death and resurrection. Death and new life. That's what the weeks of Lent are all about. And that's the message of Easter. Not just resurrection. Not just new life. But, but death, death and, and resurrection. resurrection. Death, death and, and new life. life. For there is no resurrection. Where there has not been a death. There is no new life. Unless something old has been put away. There is no born again. Until there has been a burial. We've, We've heard, heard that, that before. before. But we tend to spiritualize such thoughts out of reality. Yet the death and resurrection we are talking about here is as real and down-to-earth as the death of Lazarus. Which made it necessary for his companions to put him away in a tomb, because he was going to smell. That's how real this death is that we're talking about, and the resurrection that follows. All, All of us have experienced, experienced at some time in our life the dying, the, dying, the letting, letting go of one life for a new one. one. We left high school in our parents' home. We had to let go had to let part of ourselves die to go to work or college. We have moved from one place to another. We have experienced having to let go of the past in order to embrace the new life of the future. We have lost loved ones and have known the letting go that has to be done before our own life can go on. We have had to change jobs or vocations and have known death, the letting go, the giving up of one thing for something new to take place. Some of you know how terribly hard such dying is, how so unbelievably hard it is that sometimes we find it just impossible to let go and cling for dear life to dying things, unable to take our hands off of them. Those, Those of us who are struggling and can't get free from the misuse of alcohol and drugs. Those, Those of us who are caught in a relationship that we know has no future, but we lie to ourselves about how fantastic this is going to be for us and for the other person because we just can't let it die and let go. Is it too scary? Those, Those of us, us who are trapped in a job, a position, a status that has become a death for us and who can't let go of it for the uncertainty and the insecurity and the unfamiliarity of anything else. 
There are also those among us who have led, have the courage to let go and who know what wonderful new life is possible when we allow something to die in order for a resurrection to take place. Those, Those of us who have been willing to let go of attitudes and ideas in order that new attitudes and ideas can be born. Those, Those of us who together have let one relationship die in order that between us a new relationship can sprout and know the courage it takes and the joy. We know finally what it means to be born again. We have come to face that being born again means to be born again and, and again, again and, and again, again, and again, and, and again. again. We have come to acknowledge that if we are to be born again, and again, and again, we must also die again, and again, and again. We have learned that in dying, new life comes, that in dying, an invitation to rise comes to us. That is from inside the tomb that we hear the voice of Jesus. Lazarus. Kevin. Sarah. Peter. Jonah, Greta, come, come forth. forth.